Good evening or afternoon, late afternoon on this extremely hot day. My name is Joe Twist. I'm the chief exec of Yuki, which is the UK interactive entertainment uh, industry body. Uh, I am your compere for, for tonight. Thank you for joining us. I know it's a boiling hot day outside and I know you're stuffed in a nice cool theatre. You should count yourself lucky. Um, we have a fantastic uh, session um, here tonight. This is the second in the uh, Connected UK series of events, which is a new initiative that's organised by a consortia, or consortium partnership of professional bodies. That's what we are, the IPA, UK, PACT and BEMA. And the aim is really that we bring together some cross-pollination. We bring together experts and professionals from the different digital worlds and, and even the analog worlds that we all inhabit, from television to games to digital media, the web, and advertising through these events. Uh, it's an increasingly important area, this sort of crossover area. And we all have so many different things to bring uh, to the table. Uh, convergences here, connected TV, connected devices in general, connected experiences are such an amazing creative opportunity for us all. So it's it really important that we do this kind of cross-pollination, that we meet together, we build better connections uh, between our industries to maintain our leadership uh, and our strong position as a, as a nation uh, in this ever-changing converging marketplace. Throughout these uh, series of events, um, attendees are, are listening to the latest thinking from our range of experts and also their experiences from across the converged media landscape. The first session uh, last week was um, focused on content and it was absolutely fascinating and I saw lots of familiar faces from my BBC days which was fantastic. They've all left the BBC now. Um, and the one today is on audiences and this is the one that I think I'm, I'm most interested in personally because changing habits, changing consumer behaviour is something that we, we must never forget and we always must have an eye on what the consumer is doing um, because they, after all, are uh, what drives our business. Um, platforms and investments are the next two sessions to follow, so please do sign up and uh, spread the word um, if you're interested in those which will be happening next week and the week after. Um, there will also be an opportunity to discuss the potential for future collaboration across these areas. If, you, if there is an appetite to have more of these events, do let us know, because um, I think it's extremely important that we continue this conversation. The conversation is the important thing. We want you to be sharing ideas. Um, we want to hear uh, and be inspired um, by the insights that are offered by our expert panel of speakers and to build on those ideas, one another's ideas and connections. So I would encourage you to hang around afterwards. Forget the sun, it'll be gone by then. Um, hang around afterwards for a nice cold glass of wine and turn around to the person next to you, say hello, meet them and find out what industry and what expert skills they have so that we can collectively strengthen again our position in terms of innovation in the world. So before I introduce the um, speakers for tonight, um, I just want to uh, thank our sponsors Channel 4, Pay Wizard, Imaginox and Westminster Council. A bit of housekeeping, we have a, oh that's not a hashtag, that's a hashtag down there, Connected UK. There is a rival event happening tonight, I must let you know, at BAFTA, called Connected TV. I think that's a rather narrow focus. I would uh, encourage you, if you want, to be radical and uh, say, screw you Connected TV, it is about Connected UK, this is bigger than just TV. TV is very important to this though. Um, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Uh, but they will not have the diversity of people we have in our audience tonight, or the speakers. If you have any questions, please feel free to tweet them. I will try to pick them up uh, on my device, uh, but use the hashtag so that I can uh, find them. Um, but what I will do is introduce the speakers up to the uh, podium one by one, um, and then uh, questions will be afterwards. I'll invite the speakers to join me uh, on the stage, and then questions will be afterwards. Um, so, on to our fantastic speakers. First up, we have Neil Mortensen, who is Research and Planning Director of Thinkbox, uh, who I know very well. They do very good adverts, um, except no cats, which is a problem for me. Um, <clears throat> his 
talk uh, is uh, entitled Connected UK, the traditional TV audience, and he's going to be talking about what current audiences are doing on their different devices and the changes that we can expect to see. And he should know what he's talking about, I hope, yes? Uh, he's a long-standing member of the Media Research Group Committee and Honorary Fellow of the IPA. Uh, he was, uh, before Thinkbox, Research Director of Opera OMG for five years. He's also been a former Director of Research for ITV, uh, where he's responsible for all the research across the company, um, from advertising effectiveness to program development. So I am very much looking forward to what you have to say, Neil. Um, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for inviting me to, uh, to come and speak today. Um, I'm honoured to be on the platform with such great speakers. Uh, in the brief for this presentation, I was asked um, to talk about traditional TV, and immediately alarm bells rang. Um, a shiver went down my spine. There was a whiff of nostalgia and sentimentality. Like I was a historian with elbow patches on my jacket, invited in to tell you all about how things used to be. Uh, like giving a eulogy at a memorial service. For whenever someone uh, talks about traditional TV, what they, tend to, what they tend to mean is something that is fusty and dusty, clunky and old school. Yesterday's news. In media mouths, uh, traditional is a, a rather pejorative word. Um, but this is obviously rubbish when we talk about TV. TV is the most vibrant and fascinating uh, space in media at the moment. Um, hence the gold rush of tech companies clambering over each other to develop companion apps for TV, for linear TV, that is, viewing. Uh, hence the colonisation of the internet uh, by TV content. So cast the word traditional from your minds. Uh, today's TV is certainly consistent um, in terms of human behaviour and our desire to watch it, but it isn't what I'd call traditional. Not in the traditional sense, anyway. Um, for those of you who don't know Thinkbox, we are the marketing body um, for commercial TV in all of its forms. Um, and that last bit, um, in all of its forms, is very important. For TV has been liberated from just the TV set. Um, and Thinkbox represents and promotes TV wherever it is found. <coughs> Um, our shareholders are ITV, Channel 4, Sky Media, Turner and UK TV. And our aim is simply to help advertisers get the best out of today's TV. And my aim over the next 14 minutes uh, is to give you a perspective on how the TV audience is watching TV today. Naturally, I'll touch on some of our uh, Thinkbox research um, and give a little context to balance um, the current hype in our market um, and of course expect some numbers. It may seem as if we're in a time of unprecedented uh, change, but TV has really never stood still. Um, just a few of the um, here are just a few of the technological advances that have affected the industry over the decades. Of course, it doesn't stop here. There are many more innovations in the pipeline that will potentially transform uh, the industry in the future. What they all have in common is that they either improve the quality of our viewing experience or make the consumption of TV more convenient. So, for example, the move for, uh, to colour TV improved the quality of the, of the picture, as did digital TV and HD, um, while innovations such as uh, the remote control or Sky Plus gave us greater convenience. And as you know, technological advances are coming thick and fast. We don't seem to go a month in TV uh, without the launch of a new uh, service or the invention of a new gizmo. Technology has taken us into new areas. Um, it's producing new opportunities for content consumption, the ability for us to watch more of what, what we want, when we want it, and in even better quality. TV is now on the move. According to Barb, 7% of adults in the UK have watched a TV programme on their mobile phone at some point. And, uh, and TV is now on demand. According to the latest uh, Touchpoints data, 43% of all adults have used TVOD services, either through the internet or through their TV set. As well as this, 8 million homes across the UK are enjoying TV in HD quality across Sky, Virgin and Freeview. Three quarters of the country own a HD ready set and Sky has over a quarter of a million 3D TV subscribers. 
Even if you manage to keep up with the technology, keeping abreast of the new behaviours can be much more of a challenge. Each new technology brings a new set uh, of sometimes kind of idiosyncratic behaviours. Um, the list here is just some of the uh, observed behaviours Thinkbox has identified from our studies over the years into uh, DTR usage. My personal favourite is compressing. Um, we now consumably watch a, a, soap, a whole soap in five minutes flat without missing any of the plot lines. The hottest new trend is dual or second screening. In fact, um, given sort of being on this stage means I'm sort of uh, a screen at the moment and many of you are actually two screening right now in front of me. There are lots of stats out there, but the most reliable existing measure is the latest touch points data, showing it to be fairly small at the moment. But even though two screening only makes up, makes up a fraction of the time people spend watching TV, we are still all talking about it. We know that two screening has uh, the enhanced TV, uh, has enhanced the TV experience for some, uh, but there's little actual uh, research about it, uh, and it's time to look in actually more in more depth at exactly what the implications are for advertisers. You don't get the full picture of the living room from simply uh, asking people about their behaviour. So our new research observes them too. Uh, we have commissioned COG Research to undertake a major new ethnographic study, uh, Screen Life, View from the Sofa. The study involves filming uh, in the living rooms of 20 TV households in the UK for a two-week period. The footage will then go um, uh, lots of analysis with particular focus on the occasions when we're both watching TV and the use of a second screen, such as a laptop, a smartphone or a tablet, uh, and when those coincide. It will capture real-time evidence of actual programme and ad engagement and will enable researchers uh, to test implicit and explicit feelings about advertised brands. Um, well, we've got a huge amount of data coming in already um, and our launch date for the work is June the 28th, so please um, get to our website and uh, sign up for the event. However, without giving too much away, um, there are some, uh, here are a few emerging themes. Um, firstly, there's a sense of uh, growing closer to TV, especially for two screeners. You feel more, more part of a programme if you follow it. Um, and you can get to know the celebs online. Um, but mainly you and your friends chat and gossip around the programme and that's the real payoff. We're, a social, we're sociable animals um, and shared experiences really are the key. TV based chat also is driving the need to view live shows. Despite the idea that we can catch up any time, um, we're seeing lots of new triggers for live viewing, many of them associated with the principle of loss avoidance. Uh, we know others are, are enjoying something and we just don't want to miss out. And any idea of having a device as well as your, um, um, as well as your TV can p keep people in the living room. Um, it holds blokes in place while women watch their favourite stuff or girls chat while the footy is on. So they may not be glued to the box, um, but if they couldn't two screen, would they even be in the room? There is obviously mileage in this and we're beginning to develop some uh, two screening typologies to help uh, with future TV planning, but more of that in June. Whatever the technology uh, involved, our work has further proved that the virtual sharing of TV programmes has truly taken off. Indeed, our ability to share and enjoy TV has created uh, what we call a virtual sofa. You can now share and talk with your friends and family um, and enjoy the same types of communication, but of course not necessarily on the same sofa. Um, this boosts, for us, this boosts and confirms TV's uh, huge cultural co and commercial importance, as well as making uh, live TV even more compelling. <coughs> so we're seeing the rise in new technology and the emergence of new behaviours. This can only mean more commercial opportunities for television. TV has uh, delivered us the highest quality content to entertain us in our millions. Um, but the marriage of the internet and television supercharges TV's ability to communicate with its audience. It allows TV to reach out to the viewer and pull them in to extra content, and it gives advertisers and broadcasters a platform to interact with viewers on new levels and in greater numbers. Technology also enables new revenue streams and business models for the industry, whether that is through on-demand micropayments or extra apps through connected devices. So I suppose what we're saying is, yes, all this new technology is exciting, it's inspiring, and it's moving the industry on. 
But we mustn't get carried away with a small and often unrepresentative first mover audience. We're embroiled in an industry instinctively tuned into the new and the shining. Uh, but we are not your average UK media consumer. Um, here's some proof from uh, the world of social media, an interesting infographic from San Francisco agency Heat, comparing social media usage amongst advertising professionals with that of the general public. Um, I feel uh, that we are guilty of ignoring huge swathes of the population that simply don't conform to our idea of the new connected consumer. Uh, the reality is that they're not like us in the media bubble, and I suspect that's why we're happy to ignore them. Uh, they haven't all got iPad 3s, the latest smartphones, they're not tweeting and co-creating whilst experimenting on Pinterest and firing Instagram photos at each other. <laughs> I guess this is just a gentle warning really, but um, we, must not, we mustn't we must get lost in the excitement of the new, I mean, we must really try to get to grips with the whole audience picture. The vocab of, online, of the online world can entice us as well with its big numbers. Um, we, we often find that marketeers and creative agencies um, often have a rather shaky grip on the comparable numbers um, of the linear versus non-linear non TV activity, um, through no fault of their own really. The jargon that is rife in media planning means that advertisers are rarely told that their TV ad will be, will be viewed 260 million times in a standard TV campaign. Instead, we describe TV as 400 ratings, 80% reach, with a frequency of 5, which sounds a bit puny, really, com com uh, compared to millions of views. We call it number wanging at Thinkbox, quoting the highest possible number without qualification or context. Just as an example, um, uh, I just had a, a look at some of the BBC iPlayer uh, stats, and uh, you know the BBC iPlayer is by far the biggest and most used service for TV viewing outside of Barb. Um, in September. Uh, in 2011, it delivered a whopping 90 million views, um, which roughly equated to a staggering one and a half billion minutes of content watched. Um, it is only when you compare it to the amount of minutes viewed uh, uh, traditionally across, B across the BBC through Barb that we get the whole picture. Nearly 125 billion minutes, but of course we never think of TV in that way. All of this extra activity is valuable and growing, certainly, but we mustn't lose sight of the most important viewer experience, the one that's happening via the TV, TV screen. The rather an exciting truth is that much of the two-screening activity on social networking services simply tells us that people like to talk about TV. Um, if social media had never been invented, uh, TV would still be thriving and we just continue to talk to each other about it uh, like we always have. In fact, word of mouth specialist Keller Fay say that about 90% of all brand conversations still occurs offline. We still, love to, uh, we still love watching TV together, and Barb tells us that in households with more than one person, uh, we choose to watch an average of 54% of our viewing together over the week, rising to 60% in peak time hours. This, shares, uh, uh, this, this uh, shared viewing creates dialogue and inspires product conversations. Um, research proves what a strong role it plays in the decision-making process. Our decisions in life are dominated by our emotions and our implicit associations, and shared viewing helps us reinforce these. And of course, this conversation extends beyond the living room. It does extend over the internet, but far more significantly in the office, the bus stop and the playground. We love to talk about TV. Our research shows that it's consistently our second favourite topic of conversation after our family and friends. And 60% of, of the UK regularly recommend their favourite programmes to other people. And this rises to uh, three quarters of all 15 to 24 year olds. We're watching more uh, TV now than ever. And at Thinkbox, we're looking forward uh, to Barb helping us integrate um, all this extra TV consumption via, via non-TV devices into the existing system. Um, at the moment, we know it will increase, but we just don't know by how much. <coughs> And the reach of commercial TV is steadily increasing. 
And we look, again, we're looking forward to, uh, to more audiences coming into the current system and maybe nudging that weekly reach closer to the 100% mark. So, technology, uh, TV technology is changing. Um, making it easier for us to watch content and creating more commercial opportunities for brands and for broadcasters. Technology has liberated shared TV so we can share virtually if there's no one in the room. Um, TV and social media work well together and produce lots more opportunities for the TV market. Uh, this, undeniably, uh, this is undeniably exciting um, and the stats can seem astounding, but it's important to remain grounded, uh, to remem uh, just to remember that all of our customers, not just the media, sa media savvy ones, to analyse the numbers, to embrace the technology, uh, but keep your eye on the bigger picture. But as viewers, we still need, to, we still need and use telly in the same way. Linear TV acts as a trusted editor, it delivers shared experiences, conversation and storytelling like no other medium. We watch an average of four hours of TV each day and we really all want to be entertained above anything else. And whatever the future brings, this is unlikely to change. Thank you very much.